Well, thank you for joining us this week. And uh, this is Easter Monday, and uh, you're watching this on Monday, of course. Uh, we've just had our Easter Day celebrations. And so this week, we're going to go on and focus in on the amazing resurrection stories. We're going to think about stories like Mary arriving in the darkness at the tomb, um, the disciples running to find out what was going on, the disciples then locked in the room meeting Jesus, Thomas and his meeting with Jesus, and then the disciples on the shore of Galilee having breakfast with Jesus. It's a chance for us to dwell on these amazing moments of resurrection meetings. Uh, this week, rather than having one voice all through the week, it's going to be five different voices. I'm leading this first one, um, but other people will help us reflect on on the different resurrection accounts, it'd be lovely to have different people's angles and reflections on very familiar stories. Well, today, as we think about this first resurrection account, I, I wonder what the followers and friends of Jesus had gone through. It must have been an emotional roller coaster. That story from, particularly from Monday, Thursday through to Good Friday, uh, it's all there, isn't it? all kinds of emotions, loss and despair and rejection, um, violence and betrayal and denial, shame, guilt, failure, helplessness. I'm sure many other emotions that the followers, the friends, the disciples of Jesus went through. And then came Sabbath, the Saturday, in between Good Friday, the death of Jesus and, and Easter Sunday, the resurrection, which we, of course, know they wouldn't have been aware that anything extraordinary was going to happen. What was that Sabbath day like? After the frenetic non-stop events of Thursday and Friday, what was the stillness and the, the rest like on that Sabbath? I'm not sure the friends and followers could have found it restful. I wonder what on earth was going on in their minds. I'm sure there was some fear. Uh, maybe numbness, certainly questions. Uh, maybe for some of them, self pity or, or guilt, and a real loss of hope. But of course, the Sabbath was an enforced day of in, inactivity. And the women who were anxious to get to the body of Jesus to, to do what their customers dictated, to show Jesus the love and the care they longed to do, well, they, they needed to wait. They couldn't do those things on the Sabbath. Well, like I said, we're going to follow John's gospel through these stories. John starts on the Sunday with the morning still being dark and Mary arriving at the tomb. Let's read from John chapter 20. We're going to read today verses 1 to 10. John 20, 1 to 10. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over, looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. And then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. And he saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside and he saw and he believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Well, after the inactivity of the Saturday, the Sabbath, suddenly there is reason to run. <laughs> Mary finds the stone removed from the tomb. And the first thing she does is she runs to find Simon Peter and John. We're assuming that John is the unnamed disciple here. Then Peter and John run straight to see for themselves. John probably is quite a bit younger than Peter and, and he wins the race. But when he arrives, he hesitates. He looks in, sees the grave clothes looking odd. Um, and he hesitates. But of course, Simon Peter is never one for hesitation. He goes straight in to see for himself. We're not surprised by that, are we? It's fascinating that a few days earlier, the disciples were running away, scared from where Jesus was. And here they are 
running back to where they think Jesus is. And of course, they're running into a situation which appears really confusing. What did they make of it all? The stone rolled away. How on earth did that happen? Who had rolled the stone away? Grave coves lying in an odd way. What had happened in this tomb? It certainly didn't look like the body had been taken or stolen by somebody. Why would they leave the grave clothes behind? And the way the clothes were, were left, it looked like something strange had happened. Something unexpected. From John's accounts, we can see that the disciples, the followers, were not expecting Jesus to return back to life. There is general confusion in these accounts. And yet there's something there for John that meant that he was able to say he saw and believed. And of course, this was just the start. There was no body to be found in that tomb because Christ was raised. And Jesus would go on and he would meet with Mary. We'll find out about that tomorrow. He's going to meet with the rest of the followers and have that amazing encounter with Thomas. And we will hear about it this week, but, it, but Paul will tell us that in one time he will meet with over 500 people. But it's a start in another way too. John starts his resurrection account with early on the first day of the week. Early on the first day of the week. Surely John is referring back to the first day of creation. And surely he's pointing to, to what God is doing through Jesus, that this is recreation. This is the first day of the new creation. It's begun with Jesus' resurrection. Death and sin are defeated. Um, this Sunday is, is now resurrection day and it's the first day of a new start the new creation. Well, my prayer is that we'll, each of us will enter into these stories uh, full of fresh wonder and what resurrection means for us. A fresh understanding, a fresh excitement. And that through these stories we'll meet again the resurrected Jesus who has changed our lives and given us a fresh new start. May God bless us this week. This is love displayed. This is mercy.